sex with other just wrong sex uncleanness that is impurity the quality physically or morally lasciviousness that is licentiousness excessive indulgence of liberty contempt of the just restraints of law morality and decorum uh, the licentiousness of of authors is justly condemned by blah, blah, blah. Law is the God of wise men. Licentiousness is the God of fools. I right, so this is basically saying because you have the freedom to do things that you feel, it's like the humanism. When they be like, if it feels good, do it. That's lasciviousness. Idolatry. That is worshiping of images. Witchcraft. That says medication, pharmacy. That is by extension is magic, sorcery. So getting high. Hatred, hostility, opposition, enmity. So if you feel like Hatred, it might be your boss or your landlord or somebody that's dogging you, and then you feel hatred for them. Like, I hate you. The way you treat me, man, I just hate you. You can't, that's the flesh. That's the carnal nature. That's Satan. Variance. That is a quarrel. You know, well, just arguing. You know, well, the name of the most high is. And, you know, we, we got to keep the Sabbath. And, you know, give me that scripture song. Arguing, debating, quarreling, emulations, heat that is zeal, jealousy, wrath, that is passion as if breathing hard. You, you're so mad. It's the flesh. Strife, intrigue, drama, factions, seditions, that's disunion, division, causing disunion amongst the brothers and sisters. Heresies, that is a choice, specifically a party or disunion. So if, if I come up in here and I'm like, see, I believe that, you know, we got to we got to do the, the laws not done away with because the scriptures say so and so. And then at the class, I'm like, man, he said that we're not under the law. But, you know, I mean, tell me what you think about this. You know, and all of a sudden you rallying people to your cause. Next thing you know, it's seven people that's about the law and it's, it's eight people that's. Not about that. Now you got a division. That's the flesh. Envyings. That is ill will as detraction. That is jealousy. You feel it like some kind of way because of what somebody has, what somebody does, what somebody got, what somebody position they might have. Murders. That's killing people. Drunkenness. That's just getting intoxicated and dry. Revelings. That is letting loose. It's Friday night. <laughs> yeah, that's all that. The flesh. And such like. This is of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Now, how are you going to deal with that? If that's what the scripture is saying, what you going to believe? Well, we all human, and, you know, we, we human. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, you're going to sin a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just, if you sin, you know, just add them. We'll begin it and get back up, you know. 
Come on down to the altar and, you know, let me, let me pray for you. Uh, if anybody in here is uh is breathing, come on down to the altar. <laughs> you be down to the altar crying. I'm sorry, Lord. I can't. I can't what is wrong <laughs> Okay. I ain't going to do it. I'm, I'm okay. You go ahead and do it. <laughs> Another week. You might last two weeks and you bite the dust again. Back in the altar. Let me, let me give a couple more dollars. See, this is what being born again is about. This is the gospel. This is the gospel that Christ and the disciples was preaching. That the righteousness, matter of fact, let me get the scripture. Let me get the scripture. So y'all won't think I'm just making this up. Uh what you got? Fourteen. I don't know what you what you seeing in Romans fourteen. Romans six, I mean Romans six and twelve through uh, through it all. It's just good, just good stuff. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Chapter six and twelve. Yeah, matter of fact, I mean, I mean that that that. 1601 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin and sin that grace may abound? So grace is the influence of the most high, the influence of the spirit that's telling you, go this way, my son. Go this way. Go this way. That's grace. Follow me. That's grace. So we shall we continue to sin so that we might have more grace, that, that, that the grace of the Lord might increase because we sinning harder. So he's going to be like, come on, go this way, go this way. He says, most high forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So we're supposed to be dead. We're supposed to reckon ourselves dead unto sin. That means that the things that I did in my flesh, in my carnal nature, in my ignorance, I'm not allowing that to go down no more. I'm holding all that. Anytime that's trying to manifest, I'm holding that. It says, know ye not, or don't you know that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. So when we got baptized the water actually baptized and made us become a part of the body of Christ, the spiritual body of Christ. And he says we were baptized into his death. So that also united us with the death of Christ. So the life that Christ lived was a death. Because every day that he lived to the most high, he died to his carnal nature. See, he had the carnal nature, too. He had the, the booty-shaking, uh, lustful, all that stuff was happening in that body, too. He just didn't yield to it. He said he was tempted in all points like as we are. So you can't be tempted if it ain't no desire there. So that means that he had took on sinful flesh. It says that he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. <laughs> Romans 8. I says, no, you're not so much. Uh, it says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death to where we're dying to self, then we're going to be planted in the likeness of his resurrection where the spirit raised him from the dead. That's why it says we, we're raised by the faith of the operation of the most high. So even so we should walk in the newness of life now we're being influenced by the grace 
See, we're not continuing in sin, but we 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 we're, we've been identified or, or buried into the death of Christ. So the death of self is happening inside our body, and at the same time, uh, it's a scripture popping in my head. I'm gonna come right back to you. Get Romans the eight eight and three it says, "For what the law could not do, what the law of Moses could not do, bringing that law to the people." He couldn't make anybody perfect. He couldn't make anybody righteous. It says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, the Most High sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So Christ took on a body, and all the, the desire of sin that was dwelling in that body, he held it at bay and didn't let it manifest in that body. So he only manifested the will of the Father in that body. He spoke the words of the Father. He did the works of the Father. He says, it sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So he condemned it. By him not letting sin manifest in the flesh, he condemned sin to death in the flesh because he didn't let it live. Like if he had a, uh, yielded to the desires of the flesh, you know, and uh, just one time, that means he wouldn't have condemned sin. He wouldn't have put it to death. He wouldn't have obtained a victory for us so that now through what he did, we can receive the righteous character of the law, but not by looking outside of ourselves to try to emulate something that's not us, but having the law being written in our hearts and Christ dwelling inside of us by faith, which is the righteous character of the law, uh, coexisting inside of us at the same time and receiving the influence of that walking in the spirit. So it says, for what the law cannot do in that it was weak through the flesh, the most high son of his own son, the light of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Why? So that the righteousness of the law, the righteous character of the law of Moses might be fulfilled in us. So how is this righteous character going to be fulfilled in us? Who walk not after the desires of the fleshly carnal nature, but after the spiritual influence of Christ that's dwelling in us now. So now we choose, we alive to the most high and we got a choice to serve Satan or serve Christ because whoever it's going to break it down. It says, for they that are after the flesh do mind that is to exercise the mind, that is entertain or have a sentiment or opinion by, by implication to be mentally disposed more or less earnestly in a certain direction, intensively interest oneself in with concern or obedience. So they that are after the flesh do mind of the things of the flesh. Now he said, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived... It bringeth forth sin. So the, the thing is being dangled in front of you. Uh, so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so. You, you, go, you be going, I, I hate that I'm, I'm, I'm using certain examples, but I mean, all I can use is what I got that, that I know. So I hope I ain't offending nobody. 